It seems that every Christian has a personal belief about the timing of the second coming. Some have specific dates and others a vague idea. Some people think it is soon and others think it is far into the future and everything in between. I often get the question of why or how I have come to the conclusions that I have. I have given this a lot of thought and what I have come up with I think is worth sharing because it is essentially an approach to understanding the timing of the second coming, but not my understanding of the timing, but rather yours. In other words, whether you think the second coming is near or far, it is based on assumptions and beliefs that you have. I want to share with you some of my assumptions and beliefs, which have led me to my conclusions. You don't have to agree with them at all, but if you agree with them, it would be difficult to come to different conclusions regarding the timing. If you don't agree with my assumptions and beliefs, then you can use this as a guide to better determine your thoughts around the timing of the return of our Savior. Either way, it will probably help refine your thinking around this highly controversial topic. First, I am of the belief that everything that has been prophesied in Scripture regarding signs of the times and the last day's events will happen. Every book of Scripture has at least one and sometimes several verses that state that every prophecy will be fulfilled. Christ himself says this several times in Matthew 24 alone. I believe these scriptures. So, for example, if someone says that Christ is going to return tomorrow, I can't believe that because I believe there are prophecies that have not yet happened and therefore his return cannot be imminent. Those that believe the second coming could be any day perhaps do not believe this or they believe those prophecies have already happened or will happen during the millennium or after. The prophecies as I read them seem clear that they still need to happen and happen prior to Christ's return, but again, it is up to us individually to decide what we believe. But this philosophy does highlight a second problem. Who is to say if a prophecy has been fulfilled yet or not? For example, there will be a great scourge upon the land. Some believe that that was COVID, while others believe that is yet to happen. Another example could be the prophecy around the sun being darkened and the moon turning to blood. Some people feel that this is an eclipse, while other people believe it is something different. The prophecy around earthquakes in diverse places, which we see all of the time. But how is that different from the great earthquake? There are a lot of different interpretations of prophecies. So as we discuss these, understand that people can feel different about these, including what they are, when or if they have happened, etc. Often I have found that those that believe Christ's return is imminent believe that most of these events have already happened. I believe that while we see signs of the times including things like earthquakes and other natural disasters, the true fulfillment of these prophecies is yet to happen because they will be unmistakable. In other words, if you're going to know when the great earthquake happens versus earthquakes in diverse places, notice how here in Revelation 16:18 John distinguishes between other earthquakes and quote, there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Some people are sure various prophecies have been fulfilled, and sometimes they are right. And so the third key, I think, is that we need to understand that multiple fulfillments is a very real thing. For example, Isaiah prophesies of the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. This was fulfilled shortly after his time with the Babylonian invasion. It was also fulfilled again in 70 AD with the Romans after Christ also reiterated this prophecy, and it is foretold that it will happen again prior to Christ's second coming. So if you don't believe in multiple fulfillments, it is easy to check off a lot of prophecies as being complete, which can lead to a feeling that Christ's return is imminent. That being said, there are some events prophesied about the last days that we know haven't happened yet. For example, the temple being rebuilt in Jerusalem, the temple being built in Zion, the New Jerusalem, in Independence, Missouri. The second coming will not happen prior to these prophecies being fulfilled. Then some people say, well, yeah, but we could just pitch a tent and dedicate it, which could technically be true, but that will likely not be what happens here. For example, Ezekiel 40-48 to described the last day's temple in great detail with walls, gates, stairs, porches, posts, windows, arches, different elevations of pavement, courts, etc. Scriptural descriptions are not describing a tent or a tabernacle or any other existing structure. So another belief I have that others may not is that God doesn't use shortcuts. 
Another belief is around what a prophecy actually means. For example, there are some that believe the Great Scourge is a pandemic like COVID, while others believe that a scourge could mean any number of things. When you read Doctrine and Covenants 8496, you could interpret it many different ways. So if you are relying on isolated verses, you can come to any number of conclusions. But then you can see in Doctrine and Covenants 4531 that it says that the scourge is a desolating sickness. So depending upon which scriptures you read, we can come to different conclusions about what specific prophecies even mean. While perhaps it is a bit easier to determine what the great scourge means, it may be more difficult to know what something like wormwood means. Some read it to mean a comet or asteroid hitting the earth. Others think this could mean a nuclear war. But you have to decide what you think it means so you can determine how it plays into your beliefs around Christ's return and the timing thereof. Another thing that can happen is if we take a verse as a single prophecy without looking at its context, we can often miss when something is going to happen. In that Doctrine and Covenants 45 verse, we could come to the conclusion that COVID was the desolating sickness. But if we read the previous verse, it shows that it happens after the times of the Gentiles is fulfilled. There is another video on that prophecy, but if you think that prophecy has been fulfilled, then you may come to the conclusion that COVID was the desolating sickness. But if you feel the times of the Gentiles is not yet fulfilled, then it is unlikely that COVID is the great scourge. Another belief is whether something will literally be fulfilled or something else, like spiritually or symbolically. For example, there are prophecies that before Christ comes in glory, a spring of water will shoo forth from under the Jerusalem temple, flow down to the Dead Sea, and heal it. From a literal fulfillment perspective, this could mean quite a while before Christ's return, as there is still no temple in Jerusalem, there is no spring, and once that happens, it is estimated to take 20 or 30 years to desalinate the Dead Sea to the point things could live there, not to mention the time it takes for the surrounding region to flourish. This may be why some people feel this could be symbolic prophecy with a symbolic meaning of the transformation of the earth at the millennium or a spiritual renewal of Christ's people as they begin the millennium. While most prophets or apostles who have spoken of this seem to take it literally, others do not. So if you take something like this as symbolism, then you can highly expedite your belief around the timing of the second coming. Keep in mind that often with prophecy, it is both spiritual or symbolic and literal. Then again, some believe that God may just snap his finger and things like the Dead Sea could change overnight. If you believe this, then your belief around the timing of Christ's return can obviously be much shorter. The next belief I have stems from the confusion around the second coming events. Some people think that the second coming is when Christ touches down on the Mount of Olives, splitting it, causing a great earthquake that saves the Jews from Armageddon. That isn't when Christ comes in glory, lifting the righteous and burning the wicked. Those are two different events. Nor is the second coming Christ's appearance at the temple in Zion or his appearance at Adam on Diamond. Ezra Taft Benson discusses the various appearances of Christ in a May 1982 New Era article entitled Prepare Yourself for the Great Day of the Lord. There are in fact four events where Christ appears, including his coming in glory. They can be confusing because scripture doesn't always make it extremely clear which appearance the verses are talking about. But to help, his appearance in Zion is documented in these verses. His appearance to the Jews is prophesied in several places. This event in particular, many believe, is his second coming in glory. But there are many events that are then described after this event and prior to Christ's return wearing red. Then there is his appearance at Adam on Diamond. And finally, most prophecies describe his coming in glory. These different appearances and events cause a lot of confusion and many people believe different things as a result. So one of the things you have to ask yourself is if you believe all of these are the same event or some combined or all separate. Based on your belief, it will change what you believe about the timing of the second coming. Most Christians believe in some form of rapture, but the timing of the rapture makes a huge difference on what people believe about the timing of the second coming. Some Christians believe that the rapture happens at the same time as the second coming. Others believe it is a separate event and years apart from the second coming. This causes a lot of confusion. In other videos, I've discussed the individual prophecies in scripture that I believe are still pending, as illustrated on this chart. The majority of evangelical Christians believe in a pre-tribulation rapture that is a separate event from the second coming. 
There are also mid-tribulation rapture evangelicals that also believe rapture is a separate event from the second coming, but that it happens in the middle of the tribulation. But most of these evangelical Christians also believe that the second coming is when Christ saves the Jews from Armageddon and not later. Most Orthodox Christians, or those that follow traditional Christian beliefs, not evangelicals, also believe that the second coming is when Christ saves the Jews from Armageddon, which also includes the rapture happening just prior. But all of these beliefs ignore several prophecies, including the half-hour of silence, the spring of water that comes from Jerusalem Temple that heals the Dead Sea, as well as others. That is why I believe, with many others, especially those members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, that the second coming is a separate event sometime after Christ saves the Jews from Armageddon, and those other prophecies I spoke of are fulfilled. This maps well to an understanding of the four different appearances of Christ in the last days, where the final is his return in glory. The term rapture isn't commonly used by traditional Christians because it isn't really a separate event from his return. So my beliefs and approach to the timing of the second coming includes the following assumptions. Number one, if it has been prophesied in scripture, it's going to happen. Two, while there are precursor and minor events, the main signs of the times will be unmistakable. Number three, multiple fulfillments are part of prophecy. Number four, the signs will happen in legitimate ways without shortcuts. Number five, our beliefs circulate around what we think certain prophecies mean as well as the context. Number six, for each prophecy, we have to decide if we think it will be literally fulfilled or if it will be symbolic or spiritually fulfilled in nature. Number seven, Christ's coming in glory is different than saving the Jews or his appearance at Adam on Diamond or the New Jerusalem Temple. And eight, the rapture happens as part of his second coming in glory. Again, these are some of my beliefs and assumptions you need to come up with your own. But I know that Christians of all types but especially those within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that more closely align with the beliefs that the second coming is near, much like evangelical Christians, others that believe the second coming is aligned with the saving of the Jews at the end of Armageddon. So even within the same Christian religion, often people have different beliefs, but if they do, it is because their underlying assumptions and beliefs are different. So my advice and challenge to you is to write down your assumptions and beliefs from this list Decide what you believe on each of these points and then see how it maps or should map to your beliefs around the timing of our Savior's return. For example, if you don't believe that all prophecy must be fulfilled prior to Christ's return, perhaps you interpret those scriptures differently, then it is perfectly understandable why you might believe the second coming is soon. Or maybe you believe prophecy must be fulfilled, but shortcuts can be taken, such as pitching a tent or a tabernacle somewhere in Jerusalem, and this could count as a temple. If you believe that, then there are lots of shortcuts that could be imagined as a result. Someone could believe that the second coming is quite a bit sooner than it would be otherwise. But you get the point. Once you understand your own beliefs and assumptions, you can reconcile that and see if you need to make any adjustments to either your beliefs around the timing of Christ's return, or perhaps rethinking those assumptions and beliefs. Or perhaps you are comfortable with everything that you currently believe, which is fine too. Lastly, when the Lord returns doesn't really matter. We won't know precisely anyway, and if we are living righteous lives, we don't have to worry about it. This is not meaning we should eat, drink, and be merry, and this doesn't mean that all is well in Zion, but it does mean that we can look and believe and follow and be righteous in the meantime. Thanks for watching.